if you guys have not seen uh, Black Panther, which is an awesome movie, go see it because this video has spoilers. Enjoy. What do you see? This is your boy Cherry Space. Why don't I want to talk to you guys about Black Panther? And again, like if you guys didn't hear at the beginning of the video, well, along with the thumbnail, I said, look, if you guys have not seen the movie yet, do not click on this video because this video will contain spoilers to the awesome movie that is Black Panther. Okay, let's get into this. The video, the movie starts off so wonderfully, man. You know, we we, <laughs> we hear a little, we hear a little T'Challa ask his, his father, what, how did vibranium come to be? How did Wakanda come to be? And his father tells a little story, the tale of the story, how for centuries these five great nations once warred with each other, they came together, then another they split together, they end up splitting up because of vibranium and things of that nature and colonialism, pretty much. And just we saw present day. Well, no, we got a little bit of a flashback as to how Eric Killmonger, or Eric Stevens, as the states call him, came to be. You know, he was a, he had a father, you know, he was raised up in Oakland, California, 1992, to be exact. It was the day, you know, Zuri, uh, Forrest Whitaker's character, was the brother, well, I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, safeguard of T'Chaka, uh, T'Challa's father. And he was sent there as a spy to see how the world, how the United States ran. And just their, their sectors, they each had sectors, the spies each had sectors of wherever they lived to report back to the king to see how, how we lived in the U.S. And, you know, they lived in Oakland, you know, they blended in with the, with the environment really, really well. And it turns out the reason why Chichaco was there back in the day was because, and I have to admit, the, the, uh, the Black Panther uh, outfit was balling as hell on Chichaco, man. Did you see that, that gold rim, that gold necklace, bro? It looked fucking amazing. But anyway, back to the story at hand. Chitaka showed up because he learned that vibranium was missing. In fact, a lot of vibranium was missing. And it turns out Nijubo, you know, which was Chitaka's brother, actually sold vibranium to other, you know, foreigners, you know, which would be the United States. And Nijubo thought the reason, he said the reason why he did that was because he said, why not share, I, why not share? I have our vibranium with them, you know, because he learned, you know, he said, listen, you've sent us to spy on these people and you and I and we've seen it. You know, these people are doing terrible here. Why not? How come we just won't share, you know, the vibranium with these people to uplift their people and their communities? So then that way we can all prosper. You know, there won't be any of that hiding in shadow stuff anymore. And of course, the Chaka wasn't having it. So, of course, Chaka wanted to bring him back to Wakanda to have him face justice to which he would possibly be killed or exiled from Wakanda forever. And, of course, that didn't lead really well, as uh, Ziri told uh, T'Challa. He said, look, I was there. Your father had to kill your uncle because he sold that vibranium to people in the United States, outside of Wakanda, and he had to be dealt with. You know, and ended up, T'Challa, I'm sorry, T'Chaka ended up killing Najubo, his own brother, for the sake of Wakanda's secret, vibranium, and his other resources, and, this, and just the land, period. And really, I think that's, you know, it was when the little Eric uh, Killmonger saw the spaceship flower that he ran upstairs, you know, and he saw his, his father there dead, lying there dead, with panther claws in his, in his chest, as he later quoted while fighting T'Challa and meeting him for the first time, his cousin, at that, which I find, which is even more... Uh, distressed, which is even more bad and more sad if you ask me. But uh, as we carry on, you know, we go to present day, the aftermath of uh, the killing of T'Challa, you know, during uh, Captain, Mar Captain America Civil War. This was uh, obviously after, you know, where uh, T'Challa was actually being brought sworn in as King of Wakanda and the Black Panther. You know, the, the ceremony was really dope. Every one of the five tribes, you know, came together to celebrate him as the new king. And I just love Letitia's, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I just want to say, I just really love Letitia's, Letitia Wright's acting skills. She's a, she's a brilliant actress. Uh, Angela Bassett as well, Forrest Whitaker, Taz Bozeman, Michael B. Jordan, the whole list. They all did a great job. But I love how Letitia Wright brought Shirley to, to uh, existence. She, her wit, her quick, her swift intellect, Quirkiness and her her punchline, her one-liners were just on top of it, and it was freaking amazing, and I loved it, uh, from top to bottom. Uh, she even said, "What are those? Like, what what are you wearing on your feet?" And you know, it's a child was like, "That girl, you check these out." Uh, 
these are my uh, ceremony sweaters. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, these are these are my ceremony uh, shoes. You know, why aren't you? So why are your feet out? You were the king. He said, look, so people can kiss them. Like, look, like these are my sandals. She's like, look, I even gave you these new shoes. They're, I call them sneakers. <laughs> You know, because you get to sneak up. Okay, yeah, you get it. <laughs> so, I like that brother and sister sense of humor they have, man. It was really, I love seeing that bond that they have. But, you now moving on, you know, and I actually learned that during the ritual battle, actually, T'Challa's actually stripped of his Black Panther powers, which is rightfully so. I mean, you wouldn't want to have a ritual challenge, you know, for the throne. You know, you have, a, you have a pretty good advantage. You know, you're the Black Panther. So, Zuri, you know, takes the same heart-shaped herb that gives him the power of the Black Panther, you know, and he drinks it again for it to get out of his system. You know, it's kind of like the, that Venom take that we saw with Tom Hardy in the Venom trailer, but he got, you know, he took the power of the Black Panther away. He won his ritual challenge, and now he's the King of Wakanda. Moving on, we see London, UK, where Eric Killmonger, Michael B. Jordan's character is. He's looking at the North, he's looking at the African, it's in the African Museum, in. uh, He's looking at all the different artifacts, the ladies there, tour guys there. He's talk, she's talking them through it. He said, okay, what about this piece? I just like it really, really well. It turns out to be vibranium. Lucius says, great. I mean, the claw is there, of course. He wants, to, he wants to nab it, get the vibranium, and things of that nature, and so forth. Turns out he has a new he has a new arm. You know, he's made out of vibranium from when he was actually in Wakanda some time ago. You know, he used that little arm cannon as a weapon to handle his business. But then we also, they also tracked him down as present day as King, you know, <clears throat> and uh, they tracked him down pretty much in, I believe, in Korea, South Korea, South Korea, I believe, and, you know, they were, at, they were at a pretty good party, you know, things like that, they were tracking down Ulysses Claw, you know, he's making a deal with the CIA, Everett, Everett Ross, who was actually, who actually shaved, I mean, who actually saved Shuri from a stray bullet, while, uh, Ulysses Claw was in custody of the CIA over in South Korea. You know, they were interrogating. And, you know, he was saying all these different things. You know, with the new tech that Shuri created, they were listening on their little earpieces. And even though he knew so much, too much about Wakanda, that the other world could not get you. Now, mind you, this was when T'Challa was still on that, those traditional rules. You know, no one else could know about, you know, vibranium, Wakanda, none of that. You know, we stay to ourselves. The, the, the outside world must not know about us or our secrets. Ulysses Claw just broke it down, bro. You know, from being, you know, where it actually is located, you know, some time ago when he got his vibranium, you know, how much, which is a little tiny sliver, as he quoted, you know, things of that nature. It was really dope to see this. Uh, and then, I love that little gunfight that they had. You know, T'Challa didn't really want that, but, you know, he was led to that. You know, the general was kicking, taking names, kicking ass, things like that. You know, uh, Shiri's new inventions with, you know, as we all know from the trailer, the suit, uh, Absorbs all kinetic energy and then pushes it back out. We saw that in the trailer as well. Really dope uh, car chase scene. Um, Eric Killmonger, you know, doing his thing. Actually, when he actually took the throne, we really shocked him because he killed Zuri right in front of him. He said, and he was talking to the child. He said, "Listen, I'm not one of your people now." You see, it was then after that that it was pretty much going to be a, a ritual battle to see a ritual challenge. I'm sorry. To see who would be now be the new king of Wakanda. Of course, the child, you know, accepted it against his mother's uh, wishes and many others of the uh, Wakandan Congress, is what I call them. So they face off, you know, and of course, you know, the child fights dutifully. You know, he tries his best. Of course, he's stripped of his Black Panther powers rightfully. So I mean, you don't want to have a big advantage like that. So. It was only then until, you know, pretty much Eric Killmonger defeated T'Challa and threw him off the waterfall, to which presumably his mother and his sister and his uh, girlfriend was ex at the time. Nevaeh thought that he was actually dead. It was then until the one, actually, and this is funny how full circle things like this happen. The man that um, T'Challa defeated for the, his first ritual uh, challenge as the king of Wakanda his, one of his dwellers, one of his workers, actually found the child at the end of the seabed. So he brought him in, put him on ice, and it's the only thing that was keeping him alive. So before Eric Killmonger destroyed all the hardship there, he said, no, 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 burn that shit. Whenever I tell you to do something, do it. So he so he pretty much burned all the rest of the the hardship there. That's until Nevaeh actually came into that same area where the 
um, heart shaped earth was, was uh, was grown and everything. She took one of the uh, she took one of them, put them in, you know put it away and saved it for the child. Rightfully so, great. And then actually, Forrest Whitaker actually it's character Forrest Whitaker's character Zuri actually ended up dying in the sake for uh, to sacrifice himself for T'Challa. Am I saying no, 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 no? That's enough because Erin Killing was about to kill uh, T'Challa. And he said, he said, no, 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 no. Kill me. I'm the one that you want to kill. And then he actually killed my Eric Killmonger actually did that. He killed him right in front of T'Challa, which actually sent T'Challa in a very blind rage and really got him off his game. To which resulted in what I just mentioned. He threw him all the waterfall and pretty much presumably to the to the eyes of his mother and sister, killed him. Which then claimed him as, rightfully so even, the new king of Wakanda, because he's actually the cousin of T'Challa and <clears throat> the nephew of T'Chaka. Because if, if you recall, his father, Janubo, was the, the little brother of T'Chaka, who then, because T'Chaka came over to Oakland, California back in 92, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, so I confront him about <coughs> Janubo's uh, dealings in stealing fine branding and selling it to the United States of America. People there, because you know Janubo thought that listen, we need to stop hiding our ourselves. We need to stop cutting ourselves off from the world. People need to. Be, oh, there are other people that can benefit from this. Calvin, California, for example. You know, you sent us here to, you know, spy on these people. These people need our stuff. So pretty much. And Janubo had had two choices. One, he could face exile from Wakanda, or be face justice, or be killed. So he didn't want to go back to Wakanda and face that uh, ridicule by his own people. So he tried to kill uh, Ziri, and which resulted in Shaka defending Ziri's honor and killing him. Now, mind you, <clears throat> while T'Chaka and Ch now to Ch ah, now as T'Challa is being awoken by the heart shaped bear. He then, he goes to see his father in the spirit plane. While he's there, he confronts his father and says, you were wrong. You shouldn't have abandoned that boy. He, you should have brought him up. You should have brought him back to Wakanda so then everything, this whole thing could have been avoided. But T'Challa, T'Chaka thought, you know, he was doing the right thing. You know, all the past Panthers would do, would have done the same thing as we all learned. And we said, and T'Challa said, you were all wrong. You were all wrong. You should have never done that. Now, it actually surprised me because I'm like, oh, snap, because I grew up in that kind of traditional uh, family setting as well, where you don't, where you respect your elders and things of that nature. And so, when you hear the child do that, I was like, oh, snap. And at the same time, I'm like cheering them. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Say what you got to say, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I re so I understood the child's point of view and the elder's point of view as well. So, it was really cool to see that conflict actually come to an end. But, um... Now, if you recall during the beginning as well, T'Challa really wasn't ready to lead per se because he wasn't able. To, he wouldn't be able to lead Wakanda because he wouldn't. He would be without his father. But his father gave him wise words. He said, "Stand up, son. You are a king now." So this is what happened. So now I believe T'Challa's father now understands this son a little bit more after as things went on. You know, towards the end of the movie, you know. Pretty much, Shiloh actually buys the home, the childhood home of Eric Killmonger, and uses it as a Wakandan, I guess, resort or museum, if you will, for other kids around, you know, in that area of Oakland, California. Kids who saw the ship, they thought it was really cool, they wanted to chop it up, and pieces, the ship up into pieces and sell it on eBay. You know, and the little kid said, hey man, is this yours? And the child looks at him, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm like, oh snap, is that going to be the next Black Panther? Is that going to be the successor of Wakanda? You know, that's what I'm thinking. But even before that, even there was a big battle that uh, Eric Killmonger waged upon. Because, you know, we all know Eric Killmonger had a perspective, Twitter perspective on Wakanda. Because his father died, you know, and he just thought the people of Wakanda were just really bad and wrong for what they did. You know, so in the first battle between, you know, Eric Killmonger and uh, T'Challa, you know, he said, listen, I, my father always talked about how beautiful the sunset was in Wakanda. He said he was going to take me there. So, and... Well, Eric Killmonger's dying moment, T'Challa actually took him there, and he saw how beautiful the sunset of Wakanda was. He said it was beautiful. And so T'Challa wanted to save him, but he said, listen, no, man. You know, I'd rather die knowing the truth than live, live knowing, you know, believing a lie. So he 
pulled the sword out of him and he died, and he died right then and there. So, and then also the ending credits scene, you see Bucky, you know, enter Wakanda, you know, because Shiri says, hello, Sergeant Barnes. He said, no, call me Bucky. You know, the kids around there call him White Wolf. So now, and then we also saw him, we also see it say, Black Panther will return, will continue in the Avengers Infinity War, which I thought was pretty damn cool, cool to see. But that was a great movie, man. I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed Everett Ross's uh, cameo in it as well. You know, we always, I thought he was going to bite the dust. You know, he took that bullet for Shiri back in uh, South Korea. You know, they're interrogating uh, Ulysses Claw, you know, and things of that nature, which he knew a lot about the library. You know, he's been there for 30 damn years. That's how he got his little special arms. So it was really cool to see that. Eric Killmonger actually took him out, you know, brought him to Wakanda because he was one of his own. You know, and he pretty much manipulated T'Challa's uh, friend into starting that little war. That was a close call, but I really enjoyed the movie, man. This is your boy, Sherry Speaks. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment what you guys think about the video in the comments below. I love you guys.